show. Thank you for supporting live local comedy. Uh, my name is Kyle, and I will be your host. And over here we have Amanda, Molly, Kimden, Tyler, Tom. Oh. That's everyone. <laughs> Uh, by round of applause, who's come to one of our improv shows before? Yes! Yes, welcome back, and thanks for coming back. And by round of applause, who's first time? Welcome, welcome, welcome to our stage. Uh, so everything that we do on the stage is going to be completely made up on the spot. Uh, we'll get suggestions from y'all, and maybe sometimes volunteers. But let's practice suggestions for a second. So if I said something like, what's a some uh, place that you want to go on vacation? What would you say? Paris. Ooh, Ooh, a fancy man over here. Yeah. Ooh la la. Yes, yes, yes. And what's the one thing you must bring to Paris? An umbrella. An umbrella, of course, because Parapluie. it could. It, oh, what was it? Parapluie. She knows French. Uh, <laughs> and, Mais oui. Yes. And uh, you, must, you must bring your thing to, to protect yourself in the rain. And who's the one person that you must go to Paris with? My dog. Your dog. Lucien. <laughs> because we don't like people. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So an umbrella, umbrella, Paris, you know, your dog. What what could be more of a French movie? Um, you guys, uh, so we'll get suggestions like that. We'll get some volunteers up for some games. You guys are ready to get the squeaky clean comedy show going! for everybody. Uh, we'll start with a couple people. This is called More Please. What we're going to do is they'll be doing a scene and at any time anyone can come in and, uh, and we'll get suggestions from y'all throughout the scene. And I say, uh, what does this scene mean more of? And you can say anything. You can say pencils, firefighters, dogs, umbrellas, Paris, my dog, right? You know, whatever. You can say dog twice, I guess. Uh, and, and we'll have to put in whatever you suggest into the scene to make, and we'll have to make it work. So to get them started, uh, what's something really fun that you like to do on the weekend other than come to a comedy show? Flamethrowers. Flamethrowers? <laughs> a lot of dangerous people in the audience, yeah. Absolutely. Flamethrowers is our suggestion. And we'll get all of our scenes started with three, two, one, action. Can you all do that with me? And three, two, one, action! Got your kerosene backpack on, Lenny? I did. I went with the old school one. <laughs> me too! <laughs> yeah, the, the... Vintage with our flamethrowers. Yeah, you see my... Yeah, thank you. A little bit more. There's a little bit leaky there. I got you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah I mean, I stuck that gum on there to cover up that hole. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't explode this time. Freeze! What does this scene need? Snowman. Over, over here? Hugs. Hugs, please. <laughs> this scene needs hugs and action. You know, it's an awful dangerous game playing with flamethrowers. It really is. I appreciate you coming out here with me, so I want to. Give you an awkward flamethrower. <laughs> Watch the burner. Uh, uh, oh, 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 careful of the pug. Oh, oh, oh nope, I got some uh, gum on me for some reason. I don't know. I'm telling you. Freeze, what does it see me now? Sunscreen. Sunscreen, please, and in action. Uh, if you could grab into my pocket here, you know, this cargo pants pocket. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Now squeeze that on my face. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, I'm gonna need you to rub that in, thanks. More of that, yep, okay, there you go, thanks. All right, we, do you need to, do you need some too? <laughs> Freeze, what does this scene need? Oh, what, oh, over here. Snowman. Snowman, please, and action. Okay, if, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. it's our natural enemy. Oh, hi folks, pull up an ice block and sit for a spell. <laughs> You've got it, Frosty. About flamethrower safety and you. <laughs> I set up an old 1950s school film reel for you. Oh, man. Oh, we really should watch this. We really should. Safety first. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> flamethrower safety and you. Ooh, that's us. That's yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to learn today about flamethrower safety is everything you need to know to not melt friends of yours, like snowmen named for our lives. <laughs> Freeze! What does this scene mean? Summer! Uh, uh, what is that over summer. here? Summer, please. This scene needs summer. And action! Oh. Anybody else kind of sweating? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody Freeze. else losing about 10% uh, of their body mass per minute? <laughs> 
cool. It is July. I mean, it, it is oh, dog no. days. Oh, no. Frosty. Oh, frosty. Oh, it's Dude. so hard to get off with these old vintage no, models. don't melt. Hang on, hang on, we're Save coming. Flamethrower safety man, how do I safely remove my flamethrower backpack? We better watch this. We better watch this. <laughs> well, you see, so, sometimes you're presented by Mother Nature, who might not be practicing her own flamethrower safety. Mother Nature. Oh, Mother Nature. You start to melt away. The only thing you should really know about as your friend melts away it's just that this is perfectly natural in the world that we live in. Freeze! Now, one more thing. What does this scene need? Squirrels. This scene needs squirrels and action. <laughs> Squirrel attack! And that's our game! What's the one thing that flamethrowers can't beat? That's right, squirrels. Uh, it makes sense to me. You guys having a good time? Awesome, this next game is going to be called Columns. It's going to be for a couple of our improvisers and they're going to grab some chairs. And what we need from y'all first, so we need two volunteers who don't mind coming up sitting in these chairs and being tapped on the shoulder and filling in some suggestions. Oh, let's get, let's get these two right here. Okay. Yeah. There will be more opportunities for more people to get up on stage. Uh, but first, uh, what are y'all's names? Caroline. Caroline and? Kindle. Caroline and Kindle, everybody. Get them so, uh, Caroline, Kendall, uh, let's see. So, Kenneth and Tom will be performing a scene, and at any time they can tap you on the shoulder, just like that, and then you just fill in the blank to the sentence, whatever they're saying. So, if I said something like, hey, uh, you know, squirrels can really defeat flamethrowers because they are super dangerous. Dangerous, <laughs> exactly. Squirrels are dangerous, you guys. And, uh, Kendall, if I said, oh my gosh, uh, my favorite thing to eat in the whole world is. Glasses. <laughs> I have a mighty appetite for glasses. I go to the optometrist and I'm just like, feast. Uh, all right. So yes, they will be doing uh, their scene, they'll tap, but to get them started, what is, uh, uh, what is their job? They are firefighters or they are dog tamers or what? Back here? Principal. The, uh, principal and? Crate maker. And <laughs> Sure. Uh, principal and crepe maker. maker. Uh, and we will see the scene in three, two, one, action. Do that with me. In three, two, one, action. Principal Johnson, I can't be expected to continue making crates with the budget that we have. Well, Chief Crate Maker McDonald, the kids need their crates. I just signed us up for a free lunch program. And you don't even have to be a student. And they're all expected crates, the entire town. That's a lot of crates, Principal Johnson. With all of those crates, the children might go mad. They might say, you know what? We're going to take the school and we're going to turn it into a... Crate. A crate? <laughs> oh, my Would God. you like a giant school made of nothing oh, no. but crates? A giant school made of nothing sure, but crates. Sure, it'll be delicious, but it'll be hot. <laughs> that would be worse than the time they turn the school into a... A piece of cheese after that. I thought it was quite good. Enough. After that ill fated dairy month. When we got all that propaganda from the USDA. I remember. I remember because that was the time that everyone else was lactose intolerant, but I just became intolerant of elephants. Elephants. Oh yes. my god. Tramping around. I can't stand how loud they are. And they never forget. No. I mean, they, no. You come to school with a blue shirt and black pants one time and they keep on bringing it up. You know what they called me after that? They called me... Hi. Hi. <laughs> you have to be hi come to school with a black shirt and blue pants. Or reversed, if you're going to do it that way. What I'm saying is that this free lunch program may not be such a good idea. I mean, maybe we can make something else besides crepes. Maybe we could make light bulbs. Light bulbs for the children. <laughs> we'll call it the Uncle Fester. <laughs> That's a great idea. We need something. The school's getting such bad publicity. Everybody says these weird rhymes about us. They call us names. They call us. They call us shoes. Yes. They yes. Say, 
You guys are shoes, but you ain't got no souls. <laughs> For Christmas, you ain't getting no but cold. Right. That's what they say every time. Because we've been naughty. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. Oh, okay, good. I'm just saying, maybe I could be principal. Oh, oh thank God. Wait, what? Is <laughs> <laughs> that fast? That easy? Huh. Uh, right. yeah, you might, this flash usually helps. <laughs> You probably need some Advil. You're gonna get headaches. You're gonna get headaches. It is loud in here. You got bells. You got whistles. You got paint. paint. <laughs> and the fumes like from that smell paint are gonna yeah. cause you some headaches. Well, if I'm gonna be principal, but, I'm gonna lay down my first law right now. I'm gonna say it's illegal for any children to bring this specific item to 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 to, to our school. And that item is going to be flowers. Flowers. <laughs> Can't stand them. <laughs> Daisies, dandelions. I know those are technically weeds, but still. Anything that grows out of the ground. There will be no growing at this school. Children <laughs> will walk away knowing the one thing they learned was concrete is bad to eat. Concrete is bad to eat. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, I always like to end the scene on a moral and not eating concrete's a good one. Right? Um, so, exactly. Uh, Y'all, here's our next game. This is called Professor Know-It-All. It is for everybody. What's going to happen is these improvisers are going to line up, and uh, they are going to be a professor, but they are one professor, and they can only speak one word at a time. And they're going to answer all the questions that you have about anything in the universe related to anything. So you can just ask a question and they will answer it. So uh, let's see. Let's get uh, the professor to introduce themselves real quick, just to show how this works. Hello. My name is Bartholomew. The terrible. Yes, uh, <laughs> Bartholomew the terrible is here to answer all your questions. And though uh, Bartholomew may be terrible uh, and as as a moral human being, uh, he knows a lot of things. Uh, so what questions do we have for Bartholomew today? Okay, let's get started with a simple one. Sure. Um, yes, uh, Bartholomew, um, just a simple, quick opener, um, you know, icebreaker. Uh, what is the meaning of life? You probably are <laughs> have lots of time to talk. So you can. Yeah, talk. sure. <laughs> probably will keep. On going. And eventually you will stop. <laughs> really, the meaning of life is you talk till you stop. All right? Uh, so it's real sad, uh, but it's, it's, it's true. And also, I apologize, the professor has, is prone to outbursts sometimes. <laughs> so we'll, we have to deal with that occasionally. Um, uh, what's another question for my follow -up? What's your favorite type of cloud? Oh, yes, very, very uh, good and specific question, Bartholomew. Um, what is your favorite type of cloud? My favorite type of cloud has to be cumulus. Yes. <laughs> Real simple, a good, a good, nice cumulus cloud keeps Professor Bartholomew happy. Uh, what other questions do we have today? Why do you tune a piano? Uh, I, heard, I think I heard over here, how do you tune a piano, Bartholomew? First. <laughs> you <laughs> turn the key and then you strike the hammer on the wire, but never ever ever think that you are able to keep the life from <laughs> Slipping away. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Bartholomew thinks a lot about death. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so you can, you can tune the piano, you can turn the keys, but you're going to die. Uh, <laughs> this is dark. Sorry, you guys. What other... Uh, we have time for one more question. Are we are we uh, I heard... Uh, what's the question over here? What is wool? Gold. 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 
What is gold made out of, Professor? Gold is made out of your life long dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, if you see gold, look at it, stare into the reflection, and say, You are my dreams. <laughs> Just that simple, and no one will look at you weird. Um, all right, uh, give it up for Professor Noah Hall. Thank you, Bartholomew, for enjoying us, indulging us with that, uh, those questions. Uh, this next game is called Posables. It's for two of our improvisers. And I'm going to need a couple uh, more volunteers uh, who don't mind coming up and helping us here to pose them. What's your name? Avalon. Avalon. And? Ella. Avalon and Ella. Everybody. Give them a round of applause. All right. Avalon, I'm going to put you here with Amanda. And Ella, I'm going to put you here with Molly. And what y'all are going to do is, this game is called Posables, and these two ladies uh, cannot move without your assistance. They're your dolls, OK? So, uh, so they will continue talking in the scene and keep the scene going, but they need your help. So you can move their arms. You can move just move gently. You can move their legs by tapping them on the back and uh, tapping them on the front to have them move back. You can bend them. You can just be gen just as long as they're gentle. You can make them move. Yeah. So I want to go ahead and uh, start posing, Amanda. Just kind of practice. Yeah. Let's practice posing. And then uh, while they're doing that, I'm going to get a suggestion. So uh, for them, uh, how do they know each other? They are sisters, or they are mother daughter, so or. Nice. They are cellmates. <laughs> they are both in jail. They're both in jail for the same crime, but it's not a crime that we usually hear about. It's kind of silly. What is it? Stealing rubber ducks. Stealing rubber ducks, absolutely. <laughs> um, these two cellmates, dirty cellmates, stole rubber ducks, and they are in jail for it, and as they should be. And so they are going to continue to pose them throughout the scene. Okay. And we're going to get this started in three, two, one, action. Do that with me. In three, three two, two, one, action. I'm in for that duck. <laughs> I knew it was you. You. It was you. It was me. But it was all us. of me. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe I'm here with the famous rubber duck stallion killer. <laughs> Of Massachusetts. I hate honor you. It is my love. I will accept that love. And I'll take I, it to my own. And I will cherish it. I'm deeply honored by this development. If only, thank you, <laughs> Your Highness. Ah, oh, that's so nice of you to give me my proper do my subject. I am here to serve you, my leash. Thank you. Please I'm give here. me. Thank you. Please. Oh, give. I'm touching you. <laughs> Kiss my hand. Oh, I will when I get there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The hand. I don't want to leave your hand. It's right here in front of my leg. Can you? Oh, I'll take my hand away. Oh, I will okay. never wash this hand. I'm going to keep my hand right here and never wash it either. <laughs> yes. Why, you're, you're leaving me now, I see. I will follow. <laughs> you can follow me wherever I go. I will. Please, come in closer. Oh, I'm touching you again. I'm the best, most regal cellmate oh. you will ever have. Oh, your face. <laughs> Yes. Come closer to me. I will come very close. Yes. We will be as one for the next five to twenty years. I'm so excited. Thank you. I feel all the excitement as well. I wish we were looking at each other. Oh. <laughs> amazing. Oh. To look into your eyes. It's not. Oh. wonder what goes on in jail. <laughs> That's it. Uh, <laughs> all right, you guys having a good time? Yeah. Awesome. This next game we're going to play is called 
well-conducted story. It's again for everybody. And uh, I'm going to have all these improvisers line up again, and they're going to tell a story. It is going to be the same story, but for this, for kicks, uh, they're all going to tell it in some different styles and genres. Yeah. So for Tom, uh, can I get a style of movie? Horror. Horror film. Okay. Horror film. For Amanda, can I get a style of book? Some sort of a fantasy book, a fantasy, like high fantasy, perfect. For Tyler, can I get a style of a TV show that doesn't necessarily tell a story, you know? Uh, like, like anime. A, those are all stories. Uh, <laughs> family Feud. The Family Feud. Family Feud. So the game show Family Feud, exactly. Uh, for Kendon, can I get some style of performance art? Fire dancer. Fire dancer. <laughs> now for Molly, can I please get uh, uh, a, another style of film? Noir. Film noir. Perfect. Okay. All right. And so, perfect. So they're all gonna they're all gonna tell the same story, but they're gonna tell it in their different genres. And when I point to them, they must continue the story exactly where it left off. Uh, can I please get a uh, the title of this story? The cat. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let's finish that. The cat goes to... The cantaloupe Walmart. store. The cantaloupe store. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and, and real quick, we're going to tell the cat uh, goes to the cantaloupe store. Let's get some previews of our genres. Horror. And... Okay. Yeah. Fantasy. Family feud. Fire dancer. Film noir. Perfect. And we're going to tell the story of the cat goes to the cantaloupe store. Never to be heard again. Uh, and all good stories start with the phrase, Once upon a time! Julie was a young college co-ed who loved her cat and decided to take that cat on a road trip with her five best friends out to the lake house where the young people had been murdered nearly 20 years ago that very night. But before she left her house, a wizard appeared and says, I have a quest for you, Julie, and especially for your cat. You must find the three rings of the lake monster. <laughs> to find these rings, you must go on a quest. Julie walked into my office the other night. <laughs> she was looking for the ring that she would find on some quest that some wizard who had been just let out of the wizard school. And I didn't want to disappoint her. So I put on my gum shoes and I walked out into that dark night. Survey says, <laughs> <laughs> scary. <laughs> so little did Julie know that the rings were rings of fire. One, and two, and three, all <laughs> dancing. The most beautiful fire dance you have ever seen. It was like a Trans-Siberian concert, and it was glorious. So, as Julie set off on her quest, she... She wandered across the forest of happy turtles. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone knew that they were ancient and wise. And night fell as she was walking through the forest of happy turtles, and it became the forest of scary red blinking eyes everywhere. <laughs> the blinking eyes were the was actually the street lights reflected in the rain. And the, the rain that could not quench the fire that the happy turtles had conjected. Yes, the turtles begin to sing their song. Survey says, burn ointment. <laughs> so Julie reached into her pouch of magical supplies and pulled out the burn ointment and applied it to all the turtles to make them happier. And those turtles morphed into subhuman demon monsters. <laughs> Survey says Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! <laughs> that were found in the sewer when I had followed them, as I'm wont to do because I'm one of the only detectives in this town. And so, the turtles using their powers Summons not wind, not water, but fire themselves. <laughs> Survey says... <laughs> Magic turtle! <laughs> and Julie uh, placed all the rings in a, a arrangement above her head like a crown. 
and said, I'm queen of this forest, you turtles, and I claim my reign. Survey says, where's the cantaloupe? <laughs> At that exact moment, as Queen Julian established dominion over the forest, her cat, who was in that RV from the very first part of the story, sprung out and rolled a cantaloupe at her leg. Survey says, surprise ending! <laughs> called Four Square. It is for four of our improvisers, and they will be doing a series of different scenes. One, two, three, four more. Four. Awesome, four, perfect. Uh, they will be doing scenes, and the one that is up front is the scene that will be happening. Now, I can say shift left or shift right, and then it will be a new scene. So if I said shift right, and then Tom and Tyler will be doing a scene, and I can do that like it's flipping channels on television. So, can I please, for Tom and Tyler, can I please get a... Um, a uh, like a weird animal, like a, uh, or platypus. 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 Shift right. For uh, Tom and for Kendon, they are s they are on a heist to steal something, but it is not something you normally steal. It's something silly, like a pencil. What is it? A Pikachu. A Pikachu. They're on a quest to steal a Pikachu. Shift right. <laughs> for Kendon and for Amanda, what is a strong emotion? Sadness. S sadness. I heard sadness. And shift right. And finally, for Amanda and for Tyler, uh, what's, uh, what's a weird way uh, that you might meet someone for the first time? Car accident. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, car accident. Okay. Uh, cool. So uh, shift right, and we're going to review. Platypus. Shift right. Stealing a Pikachu. Pikachu. Shift right. Sadness. Sadness. <laughs> Shift right, shift left, shift left, and we'll get this started in three, two, one, action! Who brought your cleaner? It's the kind with the Vicks in it, so it clears up your nose. Oh, no. Don't put it in your eyes! Oh, no. Shift right! Oh, God! Oh, I'm so sorry, I accidentally crashed oh. into you just to meet you. Oh, hi! Hi, we live near each other. Yeah, we do. I've noticed. <laughs> I've noticed you do. Uh, oh. I'm bleeding. <laughs> <She's> right. <laughs> huh. Well, try to push egg omelet. Shit right. It's him. He really exists. Oh my! Yeah, no, you can eat those. Uh, basically, eat any eggs. Um. Oh, the cafeteria at the zoo is real weird. Shift left. <laughs> well, now that my shoulder's back in place. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, ow. oh, I'm sorry. It popped out again. Shift right. <laughs> yeah. So. I actually genetically engineered this species just so I could have better eggs. <laughs> Shit right! <laughs> oh my god! You could power. Whoa! Oh my god! Pika, Pika! <laughs> oh god! It's so okay. Fun. I got. I also brought saline solution. I'm just gonna. Okay. Oh. Open your eyes. I'll try. <laughs> Too much, too much, too much. Oh, 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 oh. You know, since it's Vix, you think it would automatically open your eye like it does your sinus. <laughs> Karen, why would you take me to small claims court? I thought we were in love. I wanted to see you again. <laughs> I actually genetically engineered myself so I could lay eggs and make <laughs> Uh, yes, Lord Pikachu. <laughs> Pika, Pika. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I didn't bring Kleenexes this time since it worked out so poorly last time. <laughs> 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 
like we're going through our iPad, like going through all the pictures from our vacation, okay? And all of these folks are gonna be pretending to be on that vacation and they're gonna make still photos and so they have to pose in place for whatever they say. So let's practice that. If I said something like, hey, this is the picture of when we all went skydiving, what would that look like? Ah! We're all skydiving, yeah, perfect. And if I said, this is us eating ice cream at Dairy Queen, what does that look like? Yeah, some, some, some people are eating and some people hurt. Uh, you know, lactose does different things to different people, you guys. Um, so, so yeah, they'll be just doing that. And uh, whatever, whatever we kind of talk about in our vacation uh, is, is what they have to do. All right, does this sound good? Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to be telling a story about vacation. Where is the place that we went on vacation to? Atlantis. The beach. Atlantis. Ooh. Atlantis, the hidden city under the water. Uh, <laughs> you know, so. It might be real, it might not, but we went there. <laughs> so, all right, we were, we're going to do our vacation to Atlantis. Uh, can you count this down in three, two, one, action with me? In three, two, one, action. Well, you know, Carla, we had a really great time. We found Atlantis. Yes. It was kind of a crazy deal. You know, I, you know sometimes you're like, I'm just going to go to, you know, uh, vacation to Kansas City, and sometimes you find the one lost city that everyone talks about. <laughs> but uh, it's a good time. So, uh, so... First, you know, before we found Atlantis, it was sort of like weird. What was the first thing that we did that got us there? Well, we got on our boat mm -hmm. and we sailed all the way across the ocean. Okay, let's see us on our boat sailing across the ocean. Here we are. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, you know, uh, uh, the thing that everyone must do is look majestic uh, <laughs> when they are uh, on a boat. And one of the ways that you do that is just by looking out on, over the horizon, shielding the sun from our eyes, of course. So we're all, we're all looking for, we're all on the ocean. So we're on the ocean, something kind of strange happens us, to us on the way. What's that? Um, well, a shark bit the bottom of our boat, mm -hmm. and we started to sink. Okay, the, a shark bit the bottom of our boat, and we started to sink. Let's see that picture. <laughs> okay, so obviously um, there's a lot to dissect in this picture. First of all, this shark has a ginormous mouth, and, and it, it was biting our boat. Um, and then, um, okay, so there's me, and there's one of our children, and we were afraid that the child was going to fall into the shark's mouth, so that was scary. Uh, and and uh, pretty much everyone else is just acting real surprised. Like, this <laughs> never happened to them before, which, to be fair, it hadn't. Um, absolutely. So, so, uh, so, how did we fend off the shark and all come out alive? Well, somebody on the boat had a bow and arrow, and we threw it at the shark, and okay. he swam along. Okay, so we threw an entire bow and arrow. <laughs> Let's see that picture. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else was just threatening with bows and arrows. Tyler threw his bow and arrow. And the shark was like, mm -mm, no thank you. Let's see the next, the next picture of the shark going away. 
<laughs> yeah, we were all super victorious and laughing. This was one of those live iPhone photos. Uh, it was really, really great. And so the shark was just helpless against that one bow and arrow, you know. Sharks have a lot of weaknesses. What did you think of bow and arrow? You didn't, but here it is. Uh, so, so then, uh, so we threw the bow, we, we got the shark, and then, um, and then we had to patch the hole, because there was a hole in our boat, right? So how did we do that? Lots of duct tape. Okay, here's us <laughs> duct taping the bottom of our boat. We're all working together, see? Yeah, uh, you know, some people are holding duct tape up. Uh, some people, again, with the live photos, were just, you know, uh, rubbing the duct tape in. You know, it's really important. So we rubbed the duct tape in. Okay, so, so that was kind of weird. But then we, then this is the first time we were about to find Atlantis. What happened? We saw something that looked like a city. We saw, we just looked down and saw something that looked like a city. Let's see that. And the thing to do when you saw, saw something that looks like a city is point at it. Uh, so, of course, we're all pointing, and some of us are shielding the sun from our eyes, of course. Uh, so, you know, um, Atlantis, what did it look like, by the way? Oh, no buildings. Just a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so this is not going to be a picture of people. This is going to be a picture of what Atlantis looks like. Let's see that. It's just lots of water. <laughs> so, uh, so we go down to explore Atlantis. What, what do we find down there? Fish, some deadly fish. Okay, so here's us with some deadly fish in Atlantis. All right, there's some deadly fish. I think uh, they're piranhas, maybe. Um, and we're all su we're all surprised. One of us is actually just playing dead uh, <laughs> because you know we gotta we gotta take care of ourselves, and that's a really good defense mechanism. Some of us are just playing like we don't care, <laughs> uh, and also a good defense mechanism. And, the, and then some of us, like Tyler, is just real scared. Uh, he's just a real scaredy pants. Um, so uh, so. So basically, we found that we that there was Atlantis, but it was actually just kind of a ghost town, wasn't it? Yeah. That's pretty yeah. scary. Yeah. So uh, so uh, we narrowly escaped Atlantis from the fish. How did we do that? Well, we um, drowned the fish with our bare hands. Yes. <laughs> Let's see that picture. <laughs> I really don't think any explanation is necessary. <laughs> Other than Tyler refused to participate. Because uh, he's still so scared. Okay, so we drowned the fish, we escaped Atlantis. What's the first thing that we did when we got back to shore? We ate food, because we were starving. What did we eat? Bananas. <laughs> we were done with fish. <laughs> Here's us eating bananas uh, on our journey home. Another live photo. Uh, we're all eating our bananas. It's a good time. I, at the end of the day, we had a real good time finding Atlantis, didn't we? It was an adventure. Yeah. What's the one thing you feel like we learned? Not to mess with sharks. Don't mess with sharks, y'all. And that's our slide show. Give a round of applause to all our volunteers. And, uh, you know, we have one more game for you guys tonight. Have you got a good evening? Awesome. Our final game is called Halftime Fairy Tale. It is for everybody. And what these improvisers are going to do is they're going to act out a fairy tale for you, one that we all know, and then we're going to condense the time and condense the time until we're doing it in like 10 seconds. But first, can I get a fairy tale that we all know? I heard, I heard uh, Cinderella is the first thing I heard. So we're going to all act out the story of Cinderella, and uh, I'm going to keep time and narrate this. And what's going to happen is these improvisers are going to have to tell the whole story of Cinderella, but first, what happens in Cinderella? What are things that happen? She has three evil stepsisters. Three evil stepsisters, I heard. They all die. And they all die? Sure. Uh, there's been death in this already. Uh, and she loses her shoe. Why does she lose her shoe? She's running away. In heels. She's running away in heels. That's hard. It's a terrible reason to thing to do when you're running. Uh, 
She has a stepmother too. Oh, and do we the evil, evil stepmother? Evil. Okay. Uh, how do and how do the stepmother and stepsisters treat Cinderella? Bad. Bad. Real bad. Uh, and uh, and so so what does Cinderella really want to do? She wants to meet the prince. She wants to go to the ball. You know, she's a girl. She wants to do these things. And so she does. Uh, and so how does she do that? Fairy godmother. There's a fairy godmother. What does the fairy godmother do? Give her a nice outfit and a carriage. So, you know, like a good fall cardigan look? Uh, maybe? I don't know. Uh, and so she gets a good outfit. She gets the carriage. She gets to the ball. What happens? She needs to be home by midnight or else she turns less pretty. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she needs to be home by midnight, otherwise she, she won't be as pretty as she was. Okay. It's a scale, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and so she'll she'll be less pretty if she doesn't go home by midnight. Uh, what, who does she meet at the ball? Prada. The prince. The prince, yes. Yeah, so what was over here? Piranha. Prince Piranha. Pr a prince Piranha, okay. absolutely. The prince is a piranha. In this story, uh, so so they'll be doing that. Uh, and so, what happens at the ball? She dies. She dies. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, and that's the end. Uh, she she. What happens? The clock strikes at midnight. She has she has to choke choke and run away and die. And then she, she goes. What what is the? And then what happens when she gets home? Chokes. She chokes, of course she's dying. And then she's, falls on her. And then she dies. Something falls. She's gonna die a lot, we get it. Uh, <laughs> and then locked in the attic? Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So and then the prince finds her. Prince finds her. Yada 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 shoe. Cool, we got it. <laughs> awesome. Are we ready to see the story of Cinderella? Yeah. Alright, we're gonna count this down in three, two, one, action! Cinderella, clean the, clean the house. Yeah, clean. Yeah, There's three we're of us. Mean. Yeah, and we're mean. all mean. And your stepsisters are going to the ball, and we're going to have a yeah. great time. We're all invited, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> Fix my dress. You'll appreciate me when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> not Make likely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, girls. Let's get ready for the ball. Get yeah, ready yeah. for the ball. And suddenly, a fairy godmother appears. <laughs> How are you, my darling? What are you one? doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to make all your wishes come true. Oh, really? Yes. All of them? Yes. I hear there's a ball, and uh, if you go to the ball, you'll meet a handsome friend. Oh. And you'll be able to move out of your stepmother's house. Oh, I've always wanted to move out of my stepmother's house. So, um,. This isn't working. Um, let's get you a new outfit. Oh, okay. Passive aggressive about it, but I'll take it. <laughs> Boom! Whoa! A fall cardigan. <laughs> That's fabulous, darling. I don't Have fun. Be face. back before midnight. Why? You <laughs> I mean, I'm already pretty, but I'd hate to be less. <laughs> So she gets a carriage. <laughs> and boom! Whoa. Carriage. <laughs> you just turned this pumpkin into a carriage. I did. Let me put the seatbelt on. <laughs> All right. Have a good time. Come on. Yes, okay. You're up. Come down. You're up. You're back. And so she arrives at the ball. <sighs> oh, what a lovely ball. Oh, my gosh. What a great ball cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? And she meets oh, oh, the Prince Piranha. So beautiful and stylish. Oh. Prince Piranha. Oh, Prince. Oh, Prince. Hi. Oh, no. oh. Would you mind if I, uh... What a lovely cardigan. Oh, so, <laughs> so stylish. It has pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Dance all night with you, unknown woman. Let me leave, please. <laughs> dun, 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 look, look! Oh, what strikes? What? I have Midnight. to go. What? If you think I'm beautiful now, I'll be slightly less beautiful if I stay. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, she no. runs away. She runs away. she runs away. Oh my God, a shoe! She's not matched anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we shall search the land high and low. Yes. Prince Verona. And so she's running away. And this is the first way she dies. And she seems to be choking. <laughs> Watch out for the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the second way she dies. <laughs> <laughs> Strikes again. Oh, oh, oh. This is the fourth 
you die. You know what would be cool coming up to this attic? I think you'd be safe up here. Huh? I'm coming to the safe attic. Yes, we yes. got rid of her. Yeah. <laughs> but some, but the prince finds her in the attic. Ah, I've searched the entire town except for this house. That shoe fits me. Fits you? Yeah! Yeah, put it on. I'd walk it! Oh, no way, sausage feet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it no. fits me! Oh, you. Boink! Aw, oh, dang it. <laughs> How'd you get out of the attic? What? <laughs> Watch out for the clock! So that's basically the story of Cinderella <laughs> as I remember it. Uh, but uh, so they did that in three minutes and fifty-three seconds. Woo! So that's good. I think we can do it in one minute though. One minute. All right. We're gonna tell the whole story again, but it all must elapse in one minute. So we're gonna get this one minute uh, Cinderella started in three, two, one, action! Cinderella, uh, we're going to the ball. You've given up the house. Get uh, sidetracked. Yep. Make me a sandwich. Let's go, girl. Uh, So let's get him 30 seconds to do the whole thing. Okay. 30 seconds. Let's count them down in. Three, two, one. Saturday, so come back in December and join us. We also have shows 
7.30 and 9.30 uh, that are uh, more geared towards adults. You're all welcome to come. Uh, you can uh, go to okcimprov.com for all that information. We also teach classes. So if this looks like something fun to do that you're interested in doing, go check all that on okcimprov.com. Thank you all. You've been such a lovely audience. We very much enjoy having you. Have a good night.